guys, today I'm going to be reviewing 5 to 1 by Holly Bodger. I was given an ARC through NetGalley by the publisher, so I have a copy here on my Kindle and not a physical copy. So yeah, I'm just going to pop in the cover right here. In 2054 India, the birth rate of boys to girls is 5 boys to every 1 girl. And that makes girls more valuable. In years before this, they used to marry their daughters off to the highest bidder. Now, instead, they have a series of tests which boys will have to compete for the hand of the girl. They all have a chance of winning a wife. Our story follows Sudeza, a girl who is about to become a wife despite her wishes not to, and Kieran, a boy who does not want to become a husband but is forced to compete for her hand anyways. And slowly, the two come to realize that they might just want the exact same thing. So this book comes out on the 12th of May, so there's still a few days until it comes out. I have to say that I found it very, very interesting. I first heard about it, I think it was through Abby Reads and she was talking about May releases, uh, and it was like towards the end towards the end of April. And then I actually went and checked on NetGalley to see if there was a copy on there for review, and there was, so I requested it, and I was surprised that I got accepted for it because I had heard that this was going to be kind of a major release. So I definitely made sure that I had read it before it came out so that I could put up my review about what I thought about it. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. Like, I really liked it. It was surprising to me because when I first went into it, I thought it was just going to be like a normal um, book. But then I realized that, and I probably would have known this had I read the full description on Goodreads ahead of time, but in the description on Goodreads it actually says, in dueling point of view, with Sudeza's point of view being inverse and Kieran's being in normal, typical book writing. I don't know what you call that. Had I read that, I would have known, but going into it, I didn't. So when I saw that Sudeza's point of view was in verse, because she's the first chapter, I was kind of skeptical about going into it, and I was like, what if I don't like this? Because I had never read an in verse book that I had liked. I had tried reading Alan Hopkins, uh, and I didn't like it. Like, it didn't click in my head. I didn't really understand the way Ellen Hopkins wrote, so going into this, not knowing that it was in verse, I was like, oh man, what happens if I don't understand Sudeza's point of view and I don't like it? I'm not going to want to finish this book and I'm not going to be able to give it an honest review. But then I read it and I, I, I understood it and I'm kind of going to try maybe to read some more in verse books. I hear Whitney talk about that one author that I can't remember the name of, and I think I'm gonna start looking into some of her books to try. Not entirely sure yet. It's kind of a thing that I'm deciding on doing. I'm not 100% sure. But I found that with Sudeza's point of view in verse, it wasn't poem type verse. It was just her talking and it was like lined up like a poem, and I, I don't know. It was different from the way Ellen Hopkins wrote, so I think that's what I liked about it and I was able to understand it really, really easily. Of course, because it was set in India, there were a lot of names and um, like articles of clothing and types of food that were mentioned that I had to kind of click on and be like, okay, Wikipedia, do your, do your stuff and tell me what this is because I have no idea. I had to Google some things because I didn't understand what they were, but as soon as I did, I knew what they were and I could continue on with reading. Because, I mean, I don't know a lot of Indian culture stuff. This was, like, the first time I'd ever read anything that wasn't set in, like, the USA or Canada or somewhere. It was, like, a whole other world for me, almost, because I had never really been interested in reading those kinds of books. Part of me got frustrated after a while because, um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but... Sudeza, her grandmother, so um, in the book she's called like Nanny, N-A-N-I, I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but that's how I read it, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. She was like really stern and strict and she was one of the people that actually created this uh, new country. They built this wall and it was the country that once the birth rate of girls went down, they realized that girls were like this luxury. They wanted to make this rule to do the test instead of doing the highest bidder in this new country. And her nanny was actually one of the ones that was like the makers of this place. 
But Sudeza doesn't want anything to do with these tests and she doesn't want to be a wife and I was very frustrated with the fact that her family was making her go through this when she didn't want to but like it was like a thing that they had to do because all dystopian worlds you have to follow the rules and everybody's really strict and all that kind of stuff. But I was very proud of Sudeza because throughout the test she actually defies her grandmother a little bit and I was very proud that she stood up to her and her grandma was pissed but I was like yes! Pissing off the man! Do it! You do it, girl! I also really didn't like her grandmother because they pick five boys to do these tests to fight for their hand in marriage, and so her grandmother obviously used her, like, her power thing and uh, ended up picking one of Sudeza's cousins, and she's like, that one, that one will make, make girls, you pick him. <laughs> no! No, no, nanny, I am not picking my cousin. That, no, that's gross. Ew, no. I also really liked Kieran's point of view too. I mentioned Sudezo a lot, but I liked Kieran's point of view too. I'm not sure if his Appa or Appa and Emma are either his grandparents or if they're his actual parents, but. Um, either way, he was talking about his Appa and Emma. His Emma had left um, when he was like littler littler when he was younger and he lived with his appa so I like that he actually like talked about his appa when he was younger a lot of Kieran's point of views were like talking about his life um, as a farm boy market boy sort of deal and not so much focused on the testing part which is what Sudeza's part was more of and the ending was kind of an interesting ending. It was, it didn't end where I thought it was going to, but I'm kind of glad that it ended there. But part of me wants to know, are we going to get a sequel to know what happens? Because that ending, that ending, I just, I need a sequel to know what happens. So overall, I really, really enjoyed this and I read it within like, I think less than two days and I gave it four stars and it's not that there was a lot of issues that I had with it that knocked it down or anything it just it wasn't a five star amazing book for me it was just a four star I really really liked it I really really liked it and I want a sequel but I'm definitely hoping for a sequel and I'm really grateful that I got to read this before it even came out definitely get your copies when it comes out on the 12th because I really, really liked it. I'd love to have other people to talk to about it because I don't know anybody who's read it yet. So it's just me right here in a boat party of one. So I need some other people to come join my boat that have read the book. So if you have read it, comment down below what you thought so I can talk to somebody about it. So that is it for this review, you guys. I am off to film a tag and I will see you in that video.